You want to hear the best sound in the world? <laughs> We're going to see if we can uh, cruise around some of these back roads, walk around a bit, get some grouse with the slingshot and some more with the shotgun and have some fun. I'm Zachary Fowler. And that's the Wooded Beardsman. And this is season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge. The goal of the challenge is to gain or maintain our body weight while eating nothing but wild foods. So last October, I headed up to the backwoods of Canada to meet up with the wooded beardsman and do just that for seven days. Last time on episode two of the Wilderness Living Challenge, season four. 100 pounds of meat? Probably. 100 pounds of meat, two beavers, almost a whole bear. Let's get the canoe on there and get going. Start. We just barely pulled down the road. First bite of bear meat. Hard earned bear meat. Cooked all the way through. Oh, it's gotta be good. Good and, good and safe, it's yeah. It's gotta be good by right now. And now, slingshot versus shotgun. Day two of a seven day wilderness living challenge. Good morning. Slept in. A little bit of rain going on. Woke up at first light and was like, hey, it's raining. No point in. Rushing this. It took us till 11 last night to get everything squared away. I believe I'm actually take a little bit of time too for myself and uh, do my devotions. Read my Bible for a little bit. Sounds like the rain is slowing up. It's been like two hours since I woke up. Sitting near reading and just contemplating life and all of its wonderfulness. And the beautiful sound of the rain on my covering and being nice and dry and warm. I'm gonna venture out now that it's slowing down. 40% 40 chance 40 of rain. 40 rain. 40 rain. 40 rain. Bit of a slow start, wet morning. Fire didn't want to take. We got it though. Get that uh, beaver chunked up a little bit and cooked through the night. It's looking not too bad, I'll show you. Not too shabby for a bit of a cook during the night. Looks good. What do you think? Yeah, it looks looks really good. I mean, looks Rick? looks like it's a tough chew, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she's she's cooked through. Just uh, I don't know, breaking her right, breaking her right apart. That's not bad. Yeah. You don't mind my hands in your no, meal? No, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> not at all. It'll be good. It'll be good. Yeah. No, that's good. I'm glad we put this on last night. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been a. That was a good, by putting it on last night, that must have been a good, I don't know what, five hours of kind of stewing away through the night. Softened her up, 
a little bit of a warm up this morning, throw some more of these chanterelles in and some bear fat. We'll put her on the fire once that's hot enough. We can put some coals on top and get it warmed up to a boil, rolling, rolling boil, and we'll be able to have ourselves some brunch. There we go. Breakfast is on. What you got there? Seasoning salt. It's the, seasoning salt. The secret wooded beardsman ingredient. Ingredient, and it does a heck of a job tenderizing the meat and making it palatable when you're eating it a ton. Yeah, right. And I mean, you can. The if you're by the ocean, obviously you can have salt. Yeah, you could have brought salt for me. Yeah, I could have brought some sea salt, <laughs> but uh, the only other salts you get from wild food is the salts and stuff that are in the bones. All right. Look at this. Just coming out. Oh, there's little bits of meat getting all burnt a little bit from the coals that were on top. It's cooking up nice. I'm gonna let it cook with just the pan's heat for a little bit. Let it slow cook. Yeehaw. That's awesome. I rig my slingshot up with some heavier bands. Guaranteed takedown for the grouse. I'm gonna go with a Thera band. And one of my favorite warrior pouches, the Navy Seal. And I got some green cold weather bands in there too, should it get a lot colder. Gets closer down to freezing, these will make a big difference. The Thera band does pretty decent in the cold. But the green, precise, cold weather works really good. All right, do a little practicing. Get tuned up, because I've been shooting other slingshots a lot lately, but I really think the Axiom is gonna be the winner for the, uh, for the grouse hunting. So, see what she can do. I want to make sure my aim is dead on. I don't want to hurt or wound anything. Oh yeah, look at that. Fogging it right up with all the steam coming off of that. That looks nice. Chanterelles, fat. That is going to be, oh, that's gonna be one delicious. Mm. I think I'm going for that one right there. That looks all fatty and meat. Oh, that seasoning salt. Mmm. Makes it. It's so much to chew. <laughs> I wish I'd cut that in half, but it's so good. It really is. Chris has made applesauce. Look, look. Really good. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to speak with my mouth full. <laughs> Are you going to eat the applesauce? I'm, I might have a little bit on my beaver, beaver meat. Um, but I'm still trying to stay in keto, so I'm going to have a small amount so I don't get too over-sugared. This is like walking up to the buffet. I oh, know. Like, <laughs> like Help the... yourself. So we've got uh, chanterelles, we've got bear fat, we've got beaver meat. It's seasoned to perfection. And then over here you have dessert, which is applesauce. Oh, that beaver is just falling right apart now. Even I mean, you tore it up, but like it comes right to pieces. That's that's definitely done good. All right. What do you think? Oh, it's good. That's a big hunk of beaver meat. Oops. <laughs> Missed my mouth. <laughs> yeah, 
That beaver is amazing. Glad you like it. I love it. It's so good. I just like, I don't know. It's just, just like real food. It is real food, man. It's Trapper, Trapper Canadian staple. Mm -hmm. From back, way back when people were exploring Canada. That's what people ate. Trapped the beaver, you sold the hide, pelts, and uh, you ate the meat. Jive right in there. What a mix. Is it beaver, chanterelle, the big old chunks of fat in here? I mean, look at these sizes. These big old chunks of wiggly fat. So you would recommend people eat beaver? Oh yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just eat it. Dive right in there. That's better than rabbit. Um, it's it's as good as goat, which is like my favorite meat. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of goat leg. It's like the stringier part of the leg where it's like kind of, but like cooked really well, stewed down like this, it just melts in your mouth. It tastes pretty sugary. Yeah, oh yeah. It's like real applesauce. Oh yeah. Wild apple. Applesauce. That's all left for me. <laughs> I don't know if I can eat all that. You can eat. No, oh, that is good, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's a wild apple tree. We find those in southern Ontario on the farm fields. They're everywhere like that, and nobody will bother with them because they, they look kind of gross. You know, they're all buggy, and you got to do a little bit of work to cut all that stuff out. But there's nothing wrong with them. You can make an apple. There's pie more with protein. That. <laughs> More protein. <laughs> a little bug protein in there. There's a funny story behind that. Uh, Jeremy actually ate one raw, and I think it made him sick one time. Oh, really? Yeah. He was even throwing up. So I always make sure I cook these because there's bugs literally all through it, mm. leaving all sorts of you know what. Mm hmm. So, yeah. That's what you get when you don't use pesticides, though. So organic, wild apples, no spray. Well, I'm going to load up on some more and go sit by the fire. And then we're going to pack up, I think, right? And mm -hmm. see if we can't get some more grouse. Yep. We're not going to risk traveling, I think, today. It's been off and on rain, so I think we're going to stick close to home one dinner our day before we head up the river. See if we can't pull in some more provisions, like grouse-wise, and then head out tomorrow. See some grace and dig in some more. <laughs> Lord, thank you for this food. Mm. This beaver really is good enough that it I feel like you could serve this in like a, a fancy restaurant easily and it would people would be loving it until you told them what it was. <laughs> Alright, stew's on for dinner. We're gonna head on down the road, see if we can get some grouse. You guys wanna hear the best sound in the world? <laughs> We're gonna see if we can uh, cruise around some of these back roads, walk around a bit, get some grouse with a slingshot and some more with the shotgun and have some fun. after them but I actually do. All right, grab it. Okay. <laughs> All right. First grouse with the slingshot. We, uh, I missed him up there on the road. He flew into the bushes. We went up into the woods after him. I found him up in the tree. I shot through uh, a couple pine needles. I think that's why I clipped him along the back of the spine and uh, he was all flopping around. And we jumped him in the bushes here and finished him off. That's why I didn't bring the camera for that part because I wanted to make sure I didn't uh, leave him to suffer. So we got him successfully. Let's see if we get some more. Whoa, look at the size of that. Wow, that is one big beaver lodge. That thing is 12 feet tall. I don't think I've ever seen one this big. There's not even a pond here. This is amazing. Wow, the beavers that live in this must be like 12 foot across. What a good eating that would be, huh?
Well, only one grouse today with the slingshot. That's all right. We got plenty of bear to eat. This will taste pretty good if we cook her up with the uh, bear fat. And uh, I found some lobster mushrooms, which are like this cool mushroom that is not its own mushroom. It basically it colonizes other mushrooms. They're really easy to identify. If you look them up, there's like a, you can't miss it when you find them. And they're a good tough like stewing mushroom, so it should be really good. So I took it down to the water, got it, which is just a cut and pull out its insides. I left the heart in there and I took the gizzard and cut that open and cleaned the rocks out and now I just gotta peel out this tissue here from the gizzard. It's a little tough to eat. And inside here, are these two muscles of the gizzard, it would, there's some rocks in there and the bird will grind with the rocks and the food until it's able to work that to, to its, into its digestive system. The ribs, and the front end of the beaver that we haven't finished cooking yet. Looks pretty, uh, not exactly store-bought meaty, a little more red, but it was very delicious. And we're utilizing everything that we have taken as far as game, you know? The hide is being cleaned by some the person who had the license to trap it, and they're gonna take that and sell the hide. And it was a nuisance beaver, it was trapped that way, permission-wise. So this is very sustainable, uh, healthy, uh, hunting uh, that went on and went into this. We're not just taking animals just so we can eat them on, and get views on YouTube. You know, we want to enjoy life. Mmm, yummy. Well, it doesn't look as appealing in the dusky light of, uh, dusk <laughs> but I'm sure it tastes just as good as before and everything's broken down so much from was it like a third cooking now on this beaver yeah mmm it tastes just as good mm. the beaver's still hitting the spot oh it is yeah especially after Trekking around all day. It's better than it was before. It is. It's it's softer and juicier. And it tastes wicked good after trekking around all day and, and trying to get it, all those grouse and stuff. So I guess I won that challenge. <laughs> Just because we didn't see many. But uh, that was a blast. Yeah, that was fun. It was hard hunt. It was disappointing that we weren't able to find more, but, you know. The weather's not helping us out. No, no. It's too rainy and miserable for birds to even want to show themselves. Right, we just deserve a pat on the back for not just sitting around when it was rainy and miserable all day, getting out there and trying stuff, trying stuff, see what we could make work kind of thing. Keep ahead of our food. Yep. We have so much food. We don't know when we're running out. Yeah. If we were living out here, we'd have to keep going. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, you, you can't, can't just be like, okay, we're good. All right, just because we have 100 pounds of bear meat and, like, what? 15 pounds of bear fat, maybe 20, I don't know. Yeah, both that. Yeah, something like that. I mean, if you're not counting the fat that's still in the bear meat, that's, you know, so. Yeah, you gotta keep ahead of the food if you wanna keep the weight on and keep surviving. And especially being that this is just early fall and- Thriving. Thriving, thriving, and winter will be coming. And so if we just started saying, hey, we've got good enough food for a couple weeks, we'll just eat it right. and do nothing. Next thing you know, winter comes and you're really really hungry and in the chances of getting stuff is even slimmer so i'm enjoying my food next time on wilderness living challenge season four join us as we finally push off heading further into the canadian outback for the next six days leaving civilization behind and bringing only the food that we've harvested so far and whatever else we can find along the way new episodes every monday wednesday and friday night at 9 p.m eastern standard time all right, the rest of the beaver <laughs> is fogging up the lens. She's in there, the rest of the beaver, for tomorrow's meals. <sighs> Nothing like clean teeth. I use earth paste made by Redmond. Real salt and Redmond clay. It's all natural. Spearmint toothpaste, and man, doesn't it leave you feeling, ooh, all that much fresher? Look at all the junk in my pocket. 
There's like five pounds of stuff in my pockets. I'm a pocket hoarder, I'm bad. There we go, all zipped in and cozy in my hammock here. Ah, this thing's comfortable. I had a great night's sleep last night. I'm looking forward to it tonight. It's pretty cold out there, but with my uh, under quilt from Outdoor Vitals and my zero degree summit bag from Outdoor Vitals, I should be snug as a bug. Get a good night's sleep. <sighs> and uh, see you guys in the next video. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out the little bubble here for here or here, whatever side it's on. Uh, Chris's channel there. You can go over there and watch his uh, take on today's adventures. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Fowler out.